Hi there. If you've been on Twitter within the last, I'm going to say, 18 to 24 hours, you've probably seen the hashtag YA Saves Lives. What's it all about? Well, let's see if I could sum it down as concisely and controlled as possible. Long story short, yesterday on the bookshelf section of the Wall Street Journal website, there was an op-ed article published by Megan Cox Gurdon entitled Darkness Too Visible. Contemporary fiction for teens is rife with explicit abuse, violence, and depravity. Why is this considered a good idea? Yet, in the article, which I read, it's about five pages, you could take a look for yourself, Mrs. Gordon doesn't really talk about why it's a good idea. She just talks about the evils of it, the bad parts of it. Okay, she starts off by talking about a 46-year-old mother of three looking for a welcome home gift for her 13-year-old daughter. She's in the young adult section of a Barnes & Noble, and she sees hundreds of dramatic and lurid covers. And, well, of course, uh, this woman, Mrs. Amy Freeman, feels that nothing there would be, get, would be acceptable for a teenage daughter. It's all about vampires and suicide and self-mutilation. Oh, God, the horror! Um, it's not all about vampires and self-mutilation. Suicide! So, one... Don't generalize. There are a couple of generalizations in here. Um, Miss Gurdon even goes on to say that right now contemporary teen fiction is so dark that kidnapping, pederasty, incest, and brutal beings are just a part of the run-of-the-mill things in the novels. Does she provide examples of kidnapping and pederasty and incest and brutal beings? Um, no. She goes on to say that profanity is so commonplace that most reviewers don't even remark upon it. Um, not all young adult fiction has, you know, the seven words you can't say on television. They might have a few of them. But jeez, it's not like they're pro littered with profanity, where profanity is every other word. Hello? Have you even read a good smattering of young adult fiction over the years? She continues with, Teen fiction can be like a hall of funhouse mirrors, constantly reflecting back hideously distorted portrayals of what life is. Okay, Mrs. Gurdon, Life isn't rainbows and puppies and sunshine and everyone's happy and skipping around and eating ice cream in the summer sun. No, it's dark. It's tragic. Life isn't, you know, happy and cheery. Yes, parts of it are, but life as a whole isn't like that. Look at what, what we have going on overseas. There are wars going on. And we're, you know, going around our lives shopping and seeing the latest summer blockbuster. She continues on with reading about homicide doesn't turn a man into a murderer. Yes, it doesn't. I mean, hell, I've been watching Dexter recently. I just finished the third season the other night. And just because I watched Dexter and have read the first three books doesn't mean I'm going to go out, look in the police files for people who have gotten off scot-free, find them, sedate them, bring them back to a kill room, you know, make them confess, more or less, kill them, cut them up into pieces and toss them into the Hudson River, Hell no! Did I just say that out loud? She goes on to mention something about dialectics, you know, virtue versus smut. Well, you can't really have one without the other. I mean, you you bring in a whole Derridian concept in there of the elusiveness of meaning. You can't have virtue without knowing what smut is. You can't have smut without knowing what virtue is, so on and so forth. I mean, really, it's just, it, it breaks down the binary, really. You, uh. Miss Gurdon continues with the fact that The Outsiders, published by S.E. Hinton in the 60s, was the first young adult novel. Um, well, not entirely. You see, in, in my mind, I divide young adult literature into two sections. Books that are written for teens, and books that are written for adults. Yet they both have teenage characters, and, you know, it results in, you know, the general idea that the world isn't all rainbows and puppies. So, yeah, Catch in the Rye, published in 1951, was originally intended for adults, but it really caught on with the younger audience, because, you know, there's a dysfunctional teenage character who's going around in New York in the middle of the night, trying to figure out what, what to do, how to live his life. Existential crisis and all that. Side note, in the sidebar of the article, Mrs. Gurdon also mentions, you know, a number of suggested novels for young adult readers. She suggests... Fahrenheit 451. Yeah, Montag is not a teenager. He's in his probably late 
20s, maybe 30s or 40s or so. He works burning books and that gets into a whole deal with government censorship and all that stuff, but I'm not going to touch on that. Anyways, I wouldn't consider Fahrenheit 451 necessarily young adult, but that's just, you know, based on my categorization. Basically, in the rest of the article, or a good amount of it, Mrs. Gurdon talks about how a lot of young adult novels involve, you know, cutting and self-injury and gore and gruesomeness, which, you know, in her, in her opinion, normalizes or, or, you know, makes this behavior a fad, perhaps. Um, I wouldn't say cutting is a fad, okay? Now, I have no experience with cutting, but personally, it involves self-esteem issues and that, that sort of stuff. That's just my opinion. And then she also gets into banning versus parental judgment or taste. Um, yeah, there's a big difference there. Parental judging can include things along the lines of, No, Timmy, I don't think this is a good work for you at this age, but maybe in a few years. See, that's not the banning. That's just, you know, picking books suited for one's age and taste and that kind of stuff. So see, there's a difference. Banning includes, you know, sending off to the far reaches of the world as opposed to saying no. Maybe in a few years we could, you could read this. I think you'll be more sure and appropriate then. Um, I was reading John Grisham and J.R.R. Tolkien in sixth grade at the end of elementary school. Yeah, what exactly does that say about me? And if you look at the comments of the article, there's a lot of other stuff, like generalizations, like too bad the stuff being published for kids these days is full of the F-word and vampires. Generalization. And that same commenter also questioned where the fascination for vampires came from. I'm not going to really get into that now, but it's basically eternal youth and carnal sexuality stuff. Yeah, drinking blood. Yeah. Okay, we get that. So basically, um, don't make generalizations about this stuff unless you've, you know, read a good amount of it and are enlightened and experienced with this kind of stuff. Someone even commented, Young people are now shown commonly committing acts and uttering obscenities that a generation ago were not even depicted among the dregs of society. I try to keep things civil on here. I rarely, if ever, curse. And if so, I try to keep it tame. Or bleep it. Really? And get this, some would even commented um, that they've resorted to giving their kids their old standby books, including Harry Potter. You know, and this is without feeling the, and, you know, the kids, you know, Read them, they love them, and their brains aren't being filled up with doomed darkness and the feeling that the world is inevitably a bad place to be. Yes, one, you can't always shelter your kids from how bad the world's going to be. Yes, I mean, in elementary school we were told that Columbus sailed the world to, you know, discover new land, when in reality he was on a mission. And, you know, they made friends with the Indians. No, the Indians were killed. Yeah. And as for Harry Potter, um, need I remind you of the events of books 5, 6, and 7? Not to really spoil you, but you've probably read them already. Um, hmm. Sirius Black dies. Dumbledore dies. Do I need to start saying how many people die in this? Basically, there's a whole lot more that I'd love to say, but this has been going on for a while, so I'm going to cut it. There are five or six relatively good rebuttals. I think you should check out their link down there. And if you want a good suggestion of books that, you know, explore this topic in depth, I'll give you it down there. TFTBA and LLC.